The Holy Tales. Holy, holy. Ooh. Um. Oh, hello, kids. It's time for a story, right? Yes. Wake up. Tell us a story from the Bible. All right, all right. Today's story is about three angels who come to meet Abraham and his wife Sarah. Abram and Sarai were now called Abraham and Sarah. God changed their names because now Abraham would become the father of many nations. They continued traveling around in search of food and water for their animals. One place Abraham and Sarah set up their tent was near a small grove of oak trees. The trees gave them shade from the hot desert sun. One day, Abraham was sitting in front of his tent when he saw three men a little way off. He ran to them and said, "You may rest here for a while." If you like, you can sit under the cool shade of these trees. My servants will get water to wash your feet, and I'll get some food for you. Just stay and rest before you go on your way again. The men agreed. Abraham ran inside the tent and told Sarah to bake some bread quickly, and then he ran out to his herds and chose a nice calf to cook. When the food was ready, Abraham served it to the men. While the men were eating, they asked Abraham, "Where is your wife, Sarah?" "She is inside the tent." Abraham answered. Then one of the men said, "About this time next year, I will come back this way again. By that time, your wife Sarah will have a baby boy." Sarah heard the man talking as she stood near the tent. When she heard the man say that she was going to have a baby, she laughed to herself. She and Abraham were very old, way too old to have a baby. How can an old body like mine have a baby? It wore out a long time ago, and Abraham is an old man too. God knew that Sarah was laughing at the news, so he asked Abraham, "Why did Sarah laugh? Why did she say that she is too old to have a baby? Does she think that this is too hard for God? I am telling you that a year from now, I will come back here and Sarah will have a baby." Sarah was scared to admit that she had laughed at what God said. So she denied that she had laughed, but God said, "That's not true, Sarah. You did laugh." Well, that was such a nice story. I loved it, Holly. I'm glad you did. So the question for the day is: By what names were Abram and Sarai now called? They were now known as Abraham and Sarah. Am I right, Holly? Of course, dear. Story time. Yes, I've decided to tell you a story about Abram's big move. Are you kids ready? Oh yes, always. After Terah died, God had a special message for Abram. God told him to pack up his family and move away from Haran, but did not tell him where to go. He just told him to start traveling. God promised Abram, "I will bless you to be the father of a great nation. You will be famous, and you will be a real blessing to other people. All people on earth will be blessed through you, Abram." Abram obeyed God and took his wife Sarai and his nephew Lot and left Haran. Abram was now seventy-five years old. He 
also took his servants and all the animals he owned and walked through the land of Canaan. When they were close to a city called Shechem, they stopped and set up a camp. Many people lived in that area, but God spoke to Abram again and said, I am going to give this land to you and your children. Abram was very happy, and so he built an altar for God. After a few days, a deadly famine struck Canaan. So, Abram again started traveling. The famine made it very hard to find food. There was not a famine in Egypt, though, which meant there was food there. So Abram kept going until his family reached Egypt. As they were crossing into that country, Abram suddenly thought of something. Sarai, he said, You are so beautiful that I'm worried about a problem that we may have. I'm afraid the Egyptians will see how beautiful you are and they would want to kill me and let you live. So let's tell them that you are my sister instead of my wife. Then we can be sure they won't kill me, and my life will be spared because of you. So Sarai told everyone that Abram was her brother instead of her husband. Sure enough, when the Egyptians saw how beautiful she was, they ran to tell the Pharaoh. Of course, the Pharaoh wanted Sarai to become one of his wives. So, Sarai was taken into his palace. Pharaoh treated Abram well for her sake and gave him many wonderful, expensive presents in exchange for Sarai. He gave Abram sheep, cows, donkeys, and even servants. But God knew what was going on. He knew Sarai was Abram's wife and not his sister. He wasn't happy that the Pharaoh had taken Abram's wife. God sent terrible plagues on Pharaoh's household. It wasn't long before that Pharaoh had figured what had happened. Why did you do this to me? He asked Abram. Why didn't you just tell me that Sarai was your wife? Take her and get out of here. The Pharaoh said, Abram, Sarai, Lot, all the servants, and everything he had were escorted out of the country. That was a nice story, Holy. Oh, yes. So, what's the question for the day? Today's question is quite easy. What was Abram's nephew's name? Lot! Abram's nephew's name is Lot. Yes, very smart, Freckles. I'm going to tell you a story about Father Abraham and God's promise to him. Oh, yes, yes, tell us the story. We love the song and want to know the story behind it. Okay. Long, long ago, there was a city named Ur. A good man called Abraham lived there. Abraham truly believed in God. God saw this and was very happy because at this time, not many people believed in God. He said to himself, Abraham deserves to be rewarded for being such a good man. So one day, God came to him and asked him to go to another place far, far away. He said, I promise you, Abraham, that you and your family will be great and everyone on earth will be blessed because of you. Since Abraham trusted God and believed in him, he left Ur with his family. They traveled over hills and rivers and came to a land called Canaan. They camped by a big oak tree at Moray. There at Moray, God came to Abraham once again. This time he blessed Abraham and said, This land belongs to you and your children, and the world is a blessed place because you are such a good man. 
So Abraham built a beautiful altar for God and worshipped him. But God's gift worried Abraham. He said, I am getting old and have no children to enjoy your gift. God then took Abraham outside and asked him to look up at the sky. He said, Try and count the number of stars in the sky. Abraham started counting the stars. God blessed him and said, I will give you more children than you can count. Abraham believed God and was happy. Oh, is this why we are all children of Father Abraham? <laughs> Today's question is what did God promise Abraham? Oh, I think he promised to make Father Abraham the king of Canaan. No, silly. He promised him as many children as there were stars in the sky. So, he had zillions and zillions of children. So, today's story is about how Abram and Lot go separate ways. Wow, that sounds interesting. Go on with the story, Holy. Let's not waste any more time. Abram took all his possessions and headed north out of Egypt with Sarai and Lot. By now, Lot was also very wealthy and had large herds of cattle and sheep and many servants. They traveled to a place and set up their tents between Bethel and Ai, where Abram had previously built an altar to worship God. This area was very fertile, with gardens and grass for the animals to eat and rivers for them to drink from. But Abram's and Lot's herds of cattle and flocks of sheep living together meant that there were too many animals in one place. There wasn't enough food and water to support both of their large herds. The men caring for the animals began to argue with each other. Abram's workers said, Our master is more important. His animals should get the food and water. But Lot's workers thought that Abram's herds should go somewhere else so that Lot's animals could have the food and water. Their arguing got worse until they were arguing all the time. Abram knew that this arguing was not good, so he went to talk with Lot. This arguing has to stop, he said. After all, we are related. We need to get along with each other. Here's my plan. You choose which piece of land you want to live on. Then we will separate and I'll take my family and animals somewhere else. If you want to move to some other place, I will stay here. But if you want to stay here, then I will move. It's up to you. Lot looked at the beautiful Jordan Valley. It had lots of grass and water. It was as beautiful and fertile as the land of Egypt. It was the best land around. So Lot chose the land for himself and his animals. He moved his family, servants, animals and tents near a city called Sodom. The people of Sodom were very wicked. They sinned against God by the way they lived. Lot didn't care though. He knew it was the best land for his herds and flocks. Abram stayed in the land of Canaan. God said to him, Look around you. Look as far as your eye can see in every direction. I will give all of this land to you. It will belong to you and your children. God wasn't finished with his promises. He said, I will give you children. You will have so many descendants that you won't be able to count them. So go for a walk and see your new homeland. Abram did just that. Then he built an altar and worshipped God. So, what did you kids think about the story? Oh, it was wonderful! Great! 
Now it's time for the question. Which land did Lot choose for himself? Jordan! Lot chose to move to Jordan with his people and his cattle. Very good, Tubby. You're getting smarter day by day. We cannot wait to hear another story from the Bible. Do tell us one. Today, I will tell you the story of Abraham, his son Isaac, and how God tested his love. At the end of it, I will ask a question, so listen very carefully. A long time ago, there was a man named Abraham who loved God very much. God had blessed Abraham and promised to make him great. The land of Canaan was promised to him and his children. A few years had passed and God wanted to see if Abraham still loved him. So he came before Abraham and said, Abraham, I want you to give me your son as an offering on Mount Moriah. Abraham was scared because he loved Isaac very much, but he obeyed since he still loved and believed in God. So he took a donkey and two servants along with some chopped wood and his son Isaac up to the mountain. It took them three days to reach the mountain. After reaching the mountain, he told his servants to go and build an altar where he would offer his son to the Lord. Isaac, who had been watching all of this, asked his father very innocently, Father, I can see that you're about to make an offering to the Lord, but where is the lamb? Abraham replied, Don't worry, son. God will give us a lamb. He then tied up Isaac and put him on top of the chopped wood. As he raised the knife to kill his son, an angel appeared. The angel said, Wait, Abraham, do not hurt the child. The Lord just wanted to see if you still loved him. But now he knows that you would kill your only beloved son for him. Abraham was grateful that the Lord had spared his son. When he looked up to thank the Lord, he saw a lamb. Abraham placed the lamb in the place of his son as an offering to God. Together, he and his son went back home happy. Okay, children, now for the question. What did God ask Abraham to do for him? Let me answer this one. God asked Abraham to offer his son Isaac to him. Very good, Gumbo. That is right. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hidden plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. Since there was no room anywhere else, they decided to spend the night in a stable. Here, Mary had her baby, Jesus. She wrapped him in a blanket and put him to sleep. He's got the home.